Canada's Wonderland is located in Toronto, Canada, and is one of Cedar Fair's top parks. I have no doubt they will be subject to more investments in the future. The question is, what could their next major roller coaster be? In this video, I'm going to answer just that. To come to my final prediction, I looked at a multitude of things, including park manufacturer relations, coaster models needed, space and location, and statistics. This video will be broken down into many sections based on these. So to start out, I looked at some of the recent manufacturers Cedar Fair, the parent company of Canada's Wonderland, has worked with in the past. Bolliger and Maviard comes to mind immediately. Along with that, there can be the argument for SNS, the creator of Tumbili going to King's Dominion, or Gerslauer, the creator of Hangtime at Knott's Berry Farm. Two others that have not been as recent are Great Coasters International and Rocky Mountain Construction. I think they are still very possible, so I'll include them for right now. Alright, so we'll start with those five manufacturers, B&M, S&S, Gerslauer, GCI, and RMC. To start eliminating the manufacturers, I looked at the coaster models they offer versus what the park needs. Canada's Wonderland shows off 17 different coasters across the intensity spectrum, from family coasters to a 300 foot giga. In the span of about 10 years, the park has had an influx of B&M creations, getting Behemoth, a hypercoaster, Leviathan, a giga coaster, and Yukon Striker, a dive machine. Based on this, I eliminated B&M. I know it seems counterintuitive, but hear me out. If the park overloads a certain manufacturer, many of the coasters can seem to feel the same. I know personally, I like to feel a variety of different smoothnesses and other forces. So let's have another manufacturer get a shot. Before the addition of Yukon Striker, I would say the park was in need of another inverting coaster, but now they have two, the massive B&M and Flight Deck. If you want to include the Bat, you can, but it's just a boomerang. This is another reason we can eliminate B&M. The models left on their catalog are mainly inverting. Along with that, we can take out Gerslauer, as their main coaster models, the Eurofighter and Infinity Coaster, are both inversion based. Canada's Wonderland also has three wooden roller coasters. For that reason, I debated removing GCI as most of their models are made out of wood. Notice how I said most of their models. They have unveiled that new Titan track, so they might be able to make a comeback later in the video, so I'll keep them in mind. Moving on to SNS, I feel like this company is a wild card. I'm sure that Tumbili will be a success and Cedar Fair is bound to keep working with them. Canada's Wonderland has added a record-breaking burst in the park as well. This presents a really good opportunity for maybe an Axis coaster or compressed air launch coaster. Right now, I don't have sufficient evidence to remove this manufacturer, so we're going to keep going. Finally, we have RMC. Now before you start arguing that Cedar Fair no longer works with RMC, I'll say flat out, I don't believe that. Cedar Fair installed three coasters from them, Railblazer, Twisted Timbers, and the Great Steel Vengeance. All three are great rides, and you can't tell me that Cedar Fair doesn't work with them because they supposedly flopped or whatever other reason. Maybe this is me just holding on hope that Kings Island will eventually get a ground up eye box but it also makes sense for Canada's Wonderland. They have nothing in their lineup like an RMC. It would give them another great coaster with different pacing to their B&Ms. So yeah, I'm leaving it in for right now. The next big topic of discussion is space and location. To me, Canada's Wonderland has space, just not in the right places. Basically, there are gaps between the coasters, just not big enough ones to put a major attraction. RMC and GCI can make do with this no problem, as they can convert wooden coasters into steel coasters with their iBox and Titan Track respectively. I feel SNS will have a little bit of trouble with this. Without going into too much detail, their air launch coaster is super long, and I don't see them getting a free spin. However, free spins are people pleasers, so I'll throw that out there just in case it does happen. For this scenario though, I eliminated SNS. So that leaves an RMC conversion or a GCI conversion. We've never seen a full-scale wooden coaster converted to Titan track. While it's possible, I don't think that's what would happen. Plus, a Titan retrack would pretty much be the same coaster. Instead, I think Canada's Wonderland redoes a wooden coaster to get a completely different feel. So after all that, I landed on RMC and their wooden coaster conversions. Now begs the question, which wooden coaster would get the treatment? Remember Canada's Wonderland has three wooden coasters. Coaster Coaster is a family coaster, probably not the best candidate for an RMC conversion. That leaves the mighty Canadian Mindbuster or Wild Beast. In my opinion, both are trash. That being said, Mindbuster is an out and back layout, which is not typically seen on an RMC. Plus, the forces on it are way better compared to Wild Beast. If this were the selected one, I think GCI makes more sense. The layout is not bad, it's just insanely rough to me. 
On the other side, Wild Beast is a slow and generally forceless ride, along with being really rough. So by default, that leaves Wild Beast for the conversion. But what could this RMC Wild Beast look like? Before I end the video, I'm going to go over some possible statistics. I think the possibilities are out of this world for this conversion. In the concept I created a couple weeks ago, I increased the height to just over 100 feet. I added a double inverting stall, 0G stall, and a 0G roll along with loads of airtime. For comparable size, maybe look at Wicked Cyclone or something like that. It would not be insanely big, but would still pack a major punch. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see my full concept. With all that being said, that's going to do it for this video on why it makes sense for Canada's Wonderland to have RMC convert Wild Beast. What do you think of my predictions? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.